on Fox Business. I'll be watching. All right, well, from the shuttle back to cars, if GM wants to survive, increasing fuel efficiency is a major hurdle that it must overcome. Making more efficient cars will decrease our dependence on foreign oil, a move our next guest believes is vital for the future. Joining us is Republican Congressman Trent Franks of Arizona. Good morning, or good afternoon, Congressman. I'm sorry, i got to get used to it. I get up so early. <laughs> My apologies. All right, so... Uh, it's still morning here in Arizona. Okay, good. <laughs> you make me feel better. Um, Cap and trade, it's a big topic here in this administration. Where do you stand on it? Well, I am adamantly opposed to the whole cap and trade concept. You know, in, in, in the essence of it, it's a, a $650 billion tax increase on the American public, which is about $3,000 for every family in America. And I just have to tell you that this, this administration, in, in all deference to them, are taxing and spending and borrowing and regulating America into an economic uh, coma. And I just hope that somehow we get a hold of this before it's too late. You know what I find fascinating about what you folks in Washington do? I watched Newt Gingrich testify before Markey's committee on this, and and there's arguments back and forth on on how much it will cost, how much it won't cost, how much we need. Why can't there be some study done that says this is from mathematicians, other than political spin, what it's going to cost us, so that people have knowledge so that we know whether to protest it or embrace it well you know uh, without sounding too self-serving here the the numbers that I just gave you do reflect several studies and uh, the cost of it is is going to be very significant but the the tragedy is that the market has a, the effect of being able to help regulate carbon emissions if we will let it work uh, if we will create like the RSC uh, alternative plan does to try to create innovation, to try to create conservation, alternative energy, and producing our own domestic energy reserves here, we can become energy independent, we can reduce the, the pollution in this uh, nation, and hopefully the, hopefully the world, and ultimately we can uh, somehow keep some of the money going into the terrorist of, coffers uh, well, uh, from buying so much uh, foreign, you know, Middle Eastern oil. That's one of the big issues that we miss now and then is that we buy so much foreign oil that some of that money finds its way into terrorist coffers, and they wouldn't have enough money to buy a box of sparklers if we didn't buy so much Middle Eastern oil. Okay, j just being devil's advocate for a moment, because I've, I've heard this argument so many times, and I understand nobody wants to see businesses taxed in a challenging economy, but here we are, oil is at a six-month high, and, and once again, it feels as though we're always reactionary as opposed to being proactive. I mean, when oil prices got to $140 a barrel, that's a massive tax on consumers. So at what point are we really going to fix the problem and address it as as opposed to what Tom talked about, which is the political banter. We just want to see some solutions. The American people realize that we cannot be dependent on foreign oil. How do we get to those solutions? Well, I really believe that there, we have to kind of do it the, the old-fashioned way. We have to produce our own oil and gas. We have to do what we can to uh, have innovations in energy. We have to conserve. We have to come up with alternative energy resources. And, and most of you know, things like we also have to work with nuclear energy. But the bottom line is we have to do it ourselves. We cannot, as you say, depend on foreign oil because it is an economic disaster for us. It's a $700 billion a year uh, transfer of wealth uh, overseas. And again, ultimately, from my perspective, being on, the Ar being on the Armed Services Committee, I'm concerned about the, the national security risk that it represents to us. Well, everybody's concerned about it, Congressman. And like Alexa said, we all have a concern, all of us, uh, no matter which side of the aisle we're on. But I think there needs uh, the messaging of what this is all about and exactly how it will impact me. That's what people want to know. How will it impact them? And that's what well, that's I, I think that's I think that's good, and that's probably one of the places where members of Congress fail the most. You know, I used to do oil and gas drilling, so it's something I know quite a lot about. And there's nothing easy about it. You just have to go out and make it happen. Uh, but the, the challenge is is being able to explain that to people in ways that they can understand. Uh, we have to be independent. If we doubled our alternative energy sources tomorrow, like wind and solar, if we doubled it tomorrow, we'd still only have about 1% of our energy needs. People uh, rag on America for, for using 25% of the world's energy yep. supplies, but we produce 33% of the world's goods and services. And we're a very efficient nation. Right. right. So, unfortunately, reality has to play a role here. Well, keep the message going. We'll be listening. We'll talk to you again about it again and Thank again. Thank you I'm so sure. much. Yep, Congressman Trent Frank from Arizona. Thanks so much.